trap right there. That's a wolf trap. Seriously. That thing got killed by wolf, dude. Wow. Guys, look at the size of these tracks over here. Freaking huge. Look at that. Smell that? Do that trap. Put your hand next to it. Wow. Like, this one's even fresh, guys. Look at this. Look at this trap. This thing's dude. It's the size of your hand. You smell that thing? Yeah, it's killed. Air wolves killed that thing. Didn't they? Yeah. That's crazy. Last night, huh? Where did they go? Though? Look at Where'd... this. Blood this everywhere. Where did they go, though? Where did they run through the snow? The wolves? Are they running these log roads? That's crazy. That is crazy. Look at that track. Look at that one right That's there. That's insane. Compared to the coyote track. <laughs> Just my I hand. think we saw a coyote track earlier. <laughs> yeah, but the coyote track wasn't that big. The one we saw was bigger than that. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that thing though, but that wasn't what we saw. Seriously. <laughs> Are you kidding me right <laughs> now? That's giant. You can't make that. That's the size of my hand. That's a big coyote. You see that? That's kind of spooky. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. We were, we were driving up the road up this log road in public this morning. Saw a dead coyote right on the log road. And we're like, oh, somebody must have just like shot him and left him. And we like got to looking and there's just wolf tracks everywhere. Looks like some wolves. We're in here last night because we came right down this road yesterday, like mid morning, also. That's pretty crazy. And some wolves must have killed this coyote. Wild. It even looks like he's been like, chewed up and stuff. Yeah. That's insane. Wow. That's sweet. <laughs> but not sweet. I want to thank the Barber Boys and Kevin Paul for coming on this trip and taking on the challenge of the UP. They had to head out. They went down to Kansas for a scheduled coyote hunt. Last I heard, they were making a stomping on those coyotes. Check out their YouTube channel at Grounded Hunting. So uh, we're up on this hilltop. This whole thing is just solid deer tracks in these cedars. And there's trails coming from every direction. But we found boot prints. But that's a big buck. So we'll just look a little deeper and stuff and see if we can figure out where they're coming from. It's the biggest track we've seen this week. Yeah. temperature has really gone up. It was in the 40s yesterday, which is remarkably warm for this area. And uh, it's still in the 30s this morning. Everything melted out, all the old tracks. This is all recent tracks. So this is like this morning coming back out of here after feeding. We're going to follow it back and see where it comes from. So, uh, Follow those tracks back in here, and uh, they get down this low area. They're feeding again, but these deer are obviously coming back this way this morning. So I think they're gonna come back this way this evening. And we got a little bit of diverse habitat over here, and then over here we've got a hill with some dark pines on it. And I think that in the evening those deer are gonna come back in here to feed and then move up the hill and stuff that this might be a kill spot. The wind's kind of going like this, which is perfect. Now, if a guy got to this back here, any deer that came in here would eventually get a shot at him. We just got blended in these pines somewhere back in here, right about where we stopped here. And uh, even this tree here would be pretty good. Yeah, I mean, you are a little. 
We live pretty close to the road, but this road ain't being used very much. I'm, nothing's even driven past us since we came out here. Right. I kind of like uh, that tree getting tucked up into those pine needles a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty big for putting straps around. Yeah, I guess that bottom does get pretty. Yeah, uh, look bad because you got the pines in the background blocking you. Right. But uh, anyway, we're in this corner. Eventually, you're going to get a shot at them based on the traffic. And it, the wind's going to be right. And this again, I think the traffic is so heavy here. It's the same situation we had last night, where we have all these needles, these cedar needles, laying on the snow, and that's what they're feeding on. Yeah, and I think your average guy would go further. He'd end up walking around looking at the sign and stuff. We already know what we need to know. We just need to get out of here and not go mm -hmm. any further and mm -hmm. take this. Yeah, there's always a tendency just to push a little further out and of I curiosity. Think one thing I do is I get to a point I don't want to go further. I want to look ahead yep. and say, well, this is a hunting spot here. I'm not going over there because we came in in a way that we had to win to the face. Mm -hmm. If we came in wrong, and then we'd be like, oh, what do we do now? we got one day left. The wind's wrong. Yeah, and the other thing is, too, is as you're following these trails, I mean, you kind of want to be picking trees you can hunt as you go. Exactly. Because you want to be able to shoot your trail. Right, we want to move in here and hunt tonight, possibly. Mm -hmm. We were really excited about this stuff because of the amount of deer coming in here. But we were also a little miffed because it really doesn't seem to have adequate cover for this amount of deer. Mm -hmm. I was looking over here, and it looked like there's some sawdust on the... Uh, snow like it fell out of a tree and we just walked over here and I'm glad we did because we would have probably had a confrontation tonight because this is bait. If you look close. It's cracked corn. Yeah. Yep. As soon as we crested that hill I saw all the deer sign. I actually thought it was uh, some of the ground worked up from so many deer being in here yeah. but I kind of wondered why there would be uh, so many deer on this hilltop. Mm -hmm. And this is what we got to contend with, is all these guys putting bait out. This ain't the first bait pile we ran into no, in the few nope. days we're up here. Nope. But it seems like anytime you find a hunter up here, you find a bait pile. In fact, just yesterday we ran into some good sign, but also a hay bale. So we decided to back out of there. Yeah. So this is, this is... No, this, maybe it was select cut. I was thinking maybe this hunter has been cutting trees. He's been hunting here for a long time, but... It actually could be. Yeah. I mean, uh, those trees don't look like something that a logger would cut. Right. So how long have we been here, Eric? Uh, this would be the fourth day, right? Yeah, uh, tomorrow we go home. Yep. This is the first fresh rub I have seen. The first one. Yep. I saw one in the vehicle, but it wasn't anywhere we could hunt. So, and even from the vehicle, for me, this is the first rub. Yeah, yep. I mean, I'd, if we were in Wisconsin scouting, I, we would have seen thousands by now. It'd be countless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot to be said about that. Yeah, I think that two tag thing. I think in the baiting, they're killing a lot of the racked bucks. Mm -hmm. I really do think that. Yeah, there's a real skewed population here. Yeah, I would agree. We were just out here scouting at 12.30, and now it's 2 o'clock. I'm just getting back. I looked down at my footprint from 12.30, and there's a deer track in my footprint going this way. I think the deer are bedded along the lake over there. We followed two big buck tracks right into here, and then we backed off when we got to the point where we thought we should set up, and now I'm coming back to set up. I think this is going to be a good set if the deer didn't already get in here and get spooked out. I'm going to slide in here and get into a tree where I can cover to the lake and over here in this channel see what I can find. So at 12.30, me and Eric came in here and scouted our way back. This is quite a ways back from where we can park. I'm in a cedar marsh and uh, we followed two buck tracks in here what we think is bedding up ahead on the other side of that little lake or pond and we think they're coming right through this channel the buck tracks went through like this this morning but getting out here now I see a big buck track in my tracks so it's two o'clock now so sometime in the last hour and a half they've walked through here hopefully something's still coming 
comes out. It looks like he walked in here, checked out my tracks, and walked back. Maybe he heard us and then checked out who we were or whatever. I don't know if that's bad or good, <laughs> but I'm gonna find a tree here and set up pretty quick. Okay, I got climbed up a cedar tree. I'm covering this little swath of cedar along this lake in a remote area. The lake's over there, or pond, it's really a big pond. I think the bedding is over there, and they're coming this way, and all around me here is big tracks. I don't know what you can see, but uh, there's some really big tracks down there. That's it, nothing showed. Hope Eric did better than I did. <laughs> I think we got too close because uh, those deer came in between 12.30 and 2 from when we found a spot till we came in and set up. I think they uh, heard us, came in, checked us out and left. I mean, if we would have, uh, either that or they just came out early, smelled where we were. But if we would have came in with the stand in the back and set up immediately, we'd have probably uh, got them. Well, at least I don't have to drag one out of this hell hole. <laughs> but I gotta drag myself out of here, so I better start packing up. Dan and I were actually doing a little scouting again on this piece of property today, and we decided to push in a little further than we typically do, but. Once again, today is do or die situation. This is the last night. We need to put a buck down. Um, Dan and I had picked this spot probably 400 yards behind me. <coughs> and uh, when we went in for the hunt tonight, I decided to just uh, push up a little further. I'm glad that it did because I ran into a lot of dog tracks. Either a small wolf or... Um, was a squirrel jumping around in the trees up there but either a small wolf or a, a very large coyote um, and so I pushed up probably 100 yards from the spot that Dan and I had picked out and uh, that deer sign really started to die off so I just uh, was not feeling comfortable with it and that's what brought me back to where I was last night where all the deer sign is and it's a lot of deer sign um, I decided to move 100 yards east of my position because that's my position last night because that's where all the deer came from last night. Um, so 
So I made my way up here and I started noticing some pretty dense cedars right in front of me. And as I had approached this location, I started to notice uh, some pretty big tracks. These tracks can definitely be hard to decipher um, from large doe to uh, buck tracks. But uh, that's all I really have to go on. You know, I don't have rubs in here. Um, not anything historical that I noticed anyway. But uh, the deer density is extremely high in here. And one would have to think that those bucks and does are all in one area because the only thing they're focused on in late season is food and survival. So I would imagine in this area there has to be a buck somewhere. Um, and Dan and I, after tonight, I think we've pretty well hunted this piece of property down. I think if we had another night, we could maybe make one more move in here, but tonight's the last night, so... Um, you know, but I have, I have deer sign everywhere. You can see the tracks are just all over the place. And as I had mentioned, this is 100 yards east of my position last night. This is clearly not from the three does that I saw. I mean, it is just beat everywhere. And they're feeding on, uh, they're still feeding on all those cedar pine needles that have fallen out of the trees. But uh, I pushed up to where these cedars start to get quite a bit denser. You know, I was picking out trees as I was going. I'm always paying attention. I'm just always paying attention to a tree that I can sit before I actually approach it. And then I'll take a path of approaching it in such a manner that I know I'm able to shoot uh, where I walk from. Of course, within reason, I can't shoot all the way back from where I started, but probably about three quarters of a mile in. But uh, I'm just always analyzing ahead of time um, and picking a tree before I actually just put myself in a position. I came in from straight behind me. I kicked one doe up, but I'm not I'm not really too concerned about that. It's uh, very, very quiet tonight. You might be able to hear some sleds behind me, but I think that's the first noise I've heard in an hour. All right, well, uh, do or die tonight, so. some fingers. Hope he comes through. I want to thank the Barber Boys and Kevin Paul for coming on this trip and taking on the challenge of the UP. They had to head out. They went down to Kansas for a scheduled coyote hunt. Last I heard they were making a stomping on those coyotes. Check out their Check out their YouTube channel at Grounded Hunting. Nothing showed at Eric's spot either, unfortunately. But it's really hard to get it done in a four day trip to some place you're really not familiar with trying something new. But we had a blast, because for us it's more about the adventure, it's more about the journey, the path, than it is about the kill. So going into this hunt, my real curiosity, and yours too I believe, was the migration. Mm -hmm. Um, the migration is is when deer move from their normal grounds to their winter grounds. And what they do is they, they travel from like hardwoods and ridges and swamps or wherever really. to feeding areas which are usually cedar swamps or, or uh, 
dense pine. Yeah, anywhere they can find food. Yeah, That's it's usually it's cedar. If you search enough and you search migration, you'll find maps of where those winter grounds are, and we did, mm -hmm. you know, and you'll find uh, maps of how they travel to them, and the trails will be the same trails year after year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've both talked to people who have said they've seen like 50 to 80 deer in a day on one of those migration trails. Mm -hmm. So those migration trails are can be great, but the reason you see so many deer on them in one day because it only lasts at three to five days. Right. And actually, that 80 in a day might be one day. Mm -hmm. you know, they just mm -hmm. get up and move. And it, it seems to uh, correlate around the deep snow. But I'd have to think if you don't have deep snow for a long time, it starts early and more trickle effect with the cold. Like when the leaves are all gone and stuff, they start heading that way. You know, Some of them go there early. Right, right. You know, mm -hmm. Kind of like rut. Right? I mean, rut hits a peak time and you see all this action, right? But there's really some rut early, there's some rut late, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. So, the other thing about the migration, though, is you don't have to hit a peak. Because once they move, they're in those complexes, which is pretty much the cedar swamps. Mm -hmm. And as you, if you can imagine a small cedar swamp where the deer are heading, deer come from a long ways and fill that up, and now all of a sudden there's a lot of deer in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we had kind of talked about this earlier too, Dan. Um, we're thinking of migration being on such a big scale, and it does happen that way. But um, smaller scale too, I think we were seeing that certain areas, certain properties that hold deer all year round, you know, they're all kind of moving into a, a small cedar swamp area. Mm -hmm. um, not that they're necessarily traveling a long, long ways. Um, but they are definitely moving into those cedar swamps, and I think that's for cover, for thermal cover, that's for food. Um, so for us, driving around all, all, you know, this week and looking for the deer, mm -hmm. uh, one of the big problems for me was I just thought we'd drive right to those complexes and being able to get in there. It's not that easy. They don't snowplow the trails out there. No. no. So try driving your truck through three feet of snow mm -mm. to get to those areas, and they're pretty remote. It's not happening. But we, where we're at, the complexes were a little more micro. Mm -hmm. They weren't the big ones more uh, north of here. Right, and I guess that was the point I was kind of trying to make mm -hmm. on a smaller scale. But. And there was another thing that I saw was that um, there's something that influences that migration, stops some of the migration, or alters some of that migration, and that's artificial baiting. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of baiting there's going on up here. There's a lot of baiting up here. And maybe even more so than I thought coming up here. Mm -hmm. It just seems to be ingrained in everybody up here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had people telling me, you cannot kill a deer up here without bait. It's right. not possible, especially a big buck. You can't do it without bait. But in the same token, if you think about it, the guys in the UP here can get two buck takes. Mm -hmm. They can shoot them both with a gun. They can shoot one with a bow, one with a gun, both with a bow. Pretty much, those guys are getting their two bucks. And if they're hunting over bait, they're literally keeping a lot of the deer from getting mature. If this state went to a one buck, or especially the UP, mm -hmm. it'd be a lot better state. Because I think right now, a lot of the bucks are already dead. Right, right. I think that the deer here can uh, grow to get to be a somewhat decent rack, you know, a somewhat decent size, but as soon as they hit that two and a half year old mark, they're mm -hmm. shot and they're dead because there are limitations. Uh, you have two different buck tags with your combo tag. It's three per side or four per side. So the spikes and the forks are not getting shot. So they're allowed to get to be two and a half, but as soon as they're two and a half, that's a whole deer ready. Mm -hmm. You know. So I, I agree with you. Looking around, if you go to the big public areas that are known public areas, mm -hmm. what we saw is we ran into baits. Mm -hmm. We ran into people hunting. We ran into that, but talking to locals and stuff that are around here, where are you seeing big bucks? Where is it? Well, behind the house over there, behind the bar over there, behind, behind the warden's house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Little micro spots where nobody would go, mm -hmm. same as back home, mm -hmm. because they're getting killed in that national forest. I'm talking to Cliff over at the Snipe, mm -hmm. he was saying that, you, you know, almost every 40 has a bait on it. Right. You know, how does a big deer get big in that situation? So you look around, look at the skewed 
population here of those versus bugs. It's like as soon as they got a, a rack on them, they're dying. Right, right. And, I, you know, a lot of the locals around here also, they don't believe in taking any of the does yeah. because they are the breeders. If you look at the two does that we shot on this trip, those are two of the biggest does either one of us have ever shot. Absolutely. I bet they dress 150 pounds. Mm -hmm. that would have they're huge. So. You yeah. put you put a 150 inch rack on it, and I would think it's a buck. We dropped uh, we dropped both of those does in that sled we just got. I can tell you that's a 54 inch sled, and they were well past mm -hmm. that. Um, they were over five feet long. When you lifted them up with the uh, the bucket on the tractor, mm -hmm. they're longer than us. Yeah, they're huge. Yep. Yeah, they're probably closer to six feet long. A six foot deer. They were big deer. But you can tell, you can tell that um, they're feeding and they're healthy. I mean, to well, be able to get to that size, they are finding food. But you know what I noticed is with their feeding, is those are healthy deer. People are like, oh, they're starving up there and stuff. They're not. Mm -hmm. But there is less food. Right. So what they're doing is they're eating all day long. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, we could have been on stand all day. Now, my last hunt, we went in and we scouted. Prime we example. got back in there at 1230. I went back out there. I was out there at two, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the big buck had already come out, hit my scent, and left. Yep. I remember me and you had a conversation in the woods, and I said, "Here's a buck track. Here's a buck living in this area. Mm -hmm. Let's follow this track." You said, "Well, when a doe gets to be 200 pounds, it has a big track." Mm -hmm. But what did I say? If they got the pointy toes or a doe, if the rounded toes or a buck, mm -hmm. and bucks from scraping get the rounded front toes if they're an older buck. Mm -hmm. And then when we got back, I showed you the doe's feet. Yeah. What, what, what was the case? That's they're, they're very pointy. pointy. Yeah. And they're big, what? but they're pointy. That's one of those things that should be so obvious, but until you hear it from somebody as experienced as yourself, mm -hmm. you know, I never, I never caught on to that. Yeah. I mean, it's not a hundred percent nothing is, mm -hmm. but if it's a real rounded toe, it's almost always a buck mm -hmm. on a big track. And that's awesome knowledge you have. Mm -hmm. So. We got close. That last day, I think I was really close. Mm -hmm. But, the, you know, it is what it is. Four days, I think, you, you know, most of these hunts, when you leave, you're like, if I had one more day, mm -hmm. one more day. Mm -hmm. And I think if we went in there one more day and just moved, you, you, you know, that marsh that we got in, that cedar swamp that we got in, I think we were closing in on those bucks today. And there could have been one more move from both of us. That's what I thought. If we had one more night that we would have closed in and that that's the only possible place a buck could have been at that point yeah i didn't that show it on film because it was pitch black but coming out of there i was in quite a ways mm -hmm. coming out all the way back there were deer tracks in my tracks and crossing my tracks stepping them up there were deer out there all over the place mm -hmm. so the whole time i went out there while i was sitting there there was deer walking across my trail mm -hmm. i mean that, that cedar marsh just has a million deer in it and i can pretty much guarantee you that many deer are not in there in the fall. Yeah. Yep. Very They're good. in there right now. They migrated there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the only source of food that they have that's natural aside from the baiting and uh, the baiting is really pretty well done. Mm -hmm. and every time we found sign, I thought, well, I don't, you know, they got some cedars, I, you know, uh, we go look at the tracks and we'd find a bait puff. Yep. Yep. Whether it be a, a hay so bale. If it, right? Or so if it didn't make sense, there was a reason the deer were there. Right. And even, even that, when you say the hay bales and, the, and uh, the corn piles and stuff, it was hard in some areas of the state ground to get the natural hunt that me and you want. Right, right. Every time we ran into bait, that would influence our hunt. Mm -hmm. And even though we could have, I know we could have killed deer and probably a buck on some of those setups that we found. Mm -hmm. It just didn't feel it right. It did not feel right. I mean, we would have been at one, in one situation, we would have been 100 yards off of a hay bale. Yeah. We went in there. But even if we went a ways away, we're still hunting deer that are influenced by the hay bale. Right. Coming to it. Right, right. And it just felt off. It really just felt off. Mm -hmm. um, I would rather and, go in. And, and don't take that wrong. I got nothing against baiting. Mm -hmm. I think up here is the culture and we're the outsiders. Right, right. We're the ones that do things differently. That's the truth. So I get what they're doing and what they want to do. It's just a struggle for guys like us. I mean, on the one hunt, we went in, we hunted, we knew we were on, on land we could be on, mm -hmm. and we come out, and a guy's waiting for me, and he's, 
you can't be here. This is private ground. No, it's not. It says right here, this is public. It's yeah. open to the public. And that guy just, no, no, this is, I got a camp down there. I claim this spot, and he's in my area, and you're in my, and you're yeah. in my neighbor's area, and it's yeah, public it, land, it, it and he's is, not even hunting anymore. It is the culture up here. Yeah. If a guy wanted a great hunt, late season, wants to go out and still hunt, and it's pretty much over everywhere, this is not a bad destination. No, not at all. There's deer congregated in areas, and there's not a lot of hunters. And if you get away from the bait, baiters, and really, when we got into cedar swamps, and we got off of the roads, there really wasn't any baiters. Mm -hmm. And then we had deer that were on natural movement, and we had lots of them. Mm -hmm. you, you know, um, with all the tags they give out here, I think we could have sat in there and, and shot five, six does and, if we wanted, and still had a really good chance at a good buck. Yeah, yeah. It's just one of those things again, and it's like every trip. You know, we had four days to do it, and it just ended up being a day short. If we had a little more time, uh, we were probably on to something. Um, and therefore, it's definitely not a bad area to hunt. We were pretty confident in the end here, and we didn't quite seal the deal. But had we had a little more time, I think something probably could have happened. So, um, not a bad place to hunt at all. The deer, the deer density is high, contrary to what many believe. Um, we are in Iron County, so uh, the whole population is very heavy compared to bucks, I would say, but the bucks are there. So rumors, I heard there's no deer up here. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of deer. I heard there's wolves everywhere. We cut wolf tracks, I think once, maybe twice. Maybe twice. The second time, I think it was coyotes. But we hit one wolf track the whole four days. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you go to western Wisconsin or northern Wisconsin, I see a lot more than that. Yeah. Yep. So I don't think the wolves are that bad, you know. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know how wolves necessarily work. It, it works the same as deer where they re hit pockets of them in certain areas if they move, you know. The other rumor I heard was some of the people up here bait. That is not true. All of the people up here bait. All of the people bait. <laughs> <laughs> that is true.